In this video, I will explain set building notation, a very useful notation that allows us to describe sets very precisely. There are two ways in which this notation is often used, and I will illustrate each with an example. This is my first example. There are two lines here, but they mean exactly the same thing. They're entirely equivalent. I am defining a set, and A is the name of the set. And then between curly braces, I'm writing a description of the set. Now, in the middle of this description, there is this symbol that may be new, either a column or a vertical bar. Uh, we read this symbol such that. We use this symbol only in this context, exclusively in set building notation. Don't use it anywhere else. We need this symbol because when we describe a set this way, the description is always split into two pieces, and such that does that splitting. Now, what are the two pieces? On the left side, I am saying where I am taking my elements from, and on the right side, I am putting extra constraints. So how do I read this sentence? This says that A is the set of integer numbers x such that x squared is less than 6. And if you think about that, uh, we know what those elements are, because there are not that many integers whose square is less than 6. There are only 5. So we could have simply written an explicit list. Of course, if I wanted to describe this set, I wouldn't have bothered with this. But the point of this was to show with an example how to use this notation. There are going to be many examples where we cannot write an explicit list, but we can give a description like this one. And that's when this notation will come in handy. Here is a second example. This is a slightly different way to use set building notation. A is the set we had described earlier, and I'm going to use A to describe a new set B. Like before, in the middle, I'm using this column to mean set stat. But now the things on the left and on the right are different. On the left, I am saying which form the elements of B have, and on the right, I'm explaining the notation I used on the left. How do I read this sentence? Well, it says that B is the set of elements of the form 2x such that x is an element of A. In other words, B consists of any element which is 2 times an element in A. Well, since those are the elements in A, 2 times 1 of those will give me the set, and that's the set I just described. To make sure you understand this notation, try this exercise. I have described four sets using set building notation, but they all have an initial description. Can you tell me what each of these sets actually is? At this moment, I invite you to pause the video and think about this problem. And once you have a solution, continue watching. I will write an answer in the description of the video. There is a family of sets that are constructed using set building notation, and they are so useful and appear so often that it's worth looking at them explicitly. They are the intervals. So let's fix two real numbers, a and b, and I'm going to use them to construct a few sets. The first is this one. Now, this thing I've written here, bracket a, comma b, bracket, is actually the name of the set. And the description of this set is as follows. This is the set of real numbers, which are between A and B, where both of them included. So geometrically, if this is a real line, this set would be this segment with both endpoints included. I could also construct a similar set that does not include the endpoints, and the standard notation for it is as follows. So the name of the set uses square brackets when I include the endpoints, and round brackets when I don't. And geometrically, I fill in the circle when I include it, and leave it empty when I do not. Of course, I can also mix and match, for example. A different variation is to not include an endpoint and leave it unbounded. Notice that infinity is not a number and is never included. This is just a piece of notation to say I'm not putting a constraint on the right. So this is a set of real numbers greater than 8, and that's it. So here is another variation. 
But at this moment, I assume you know what this means. So I invite you to write this definition and this geometric interpretation. 